So it seems like every summer we plant sunflower seeds and get them started. They go, I don't know, six inches, eight inches, and over a weekend we notice that the rabbits have gotten to them and they start to chew off the leaves and we try and rescue them or put them in a pot and put them higher up off the ground or put a fence around them and they have to struggle. Or um, we'll have a real, real dry spell or a windy spell and those little stalks, those little will-be future sunflowers get bent or some of the blossoms get broken off or the leaves get torn. And I have been amazed this year in particular, that even though all of our efforts to try and keep the sunflowers alive with no damage were not infallible, we still had some loss, I saw one of our sunflowers that had gotten chewed down by deer, I think, down to just a handful of little bare little leaves and they nibbled off the place where the bud were just forming. And then something amazing happened. The thing started putting out new blossoms late in the season. It was like the plant knew, even when that happens, even when something tears or breaks, you start over, you begin again. When a plant has that happen, you don't punish the plant and cut it down because, well, how come you weren't invulnerable? How come you let the deer eat you? You say, how can we start over? The plant says, how do we start over? And puts out new blossoms, new leaves, and begins again. And I've been thinking a lot about that because this coming Sunday, we're going to hear Jesus talk about life in the community of his followers when he assumes things are going to go wrong. He assumes there's going to be times when there's tears, there's breaks in relationship. As a classic example, Jesus says, when somebody sins against you, and then he gives direction. How, how do we handle that? When somebody hurts you, when somebody says something that upsets you, maybe they didn't mean it, maybe they did in a fit of anger, but how do, how do we deal with relationship when somebody breaks relationship, when someone sins against you, when you sin against somebody else? And Jesus' overarching principle is we begin again and one-on-one -on -one, I talk to the person say hey when you said that that really hurt my feelings or when somebody comes to me and says hey when you did this that upset me now we can deal with it and if if it, I realize now my mistake now we can start over the goal isn't I need to call out every time you do something wrong so I can zap you or give you demerits or you'll lose your uh, heavenly you know point score or something it's not about points it never has been it has been instead always about how do we begin again and when the flowers get chewed off by deer or when the leaves get torn or the stem gets bent in the wind, how do we begin again and let love blossom all over again? Jesus gives us a vision, not that the Christian community will be perfect and that we'll never mess up, we'll never hurt each other, we'll never say the wrong thing or upset somebody, but rather when it happens, we have the skills and the tools to begin again because we are a community that's grounded in grace that's grounded in god's way of helping us to heal is that we forgive we let go we tell the truth about ways we've been hurt and then we apologize and we make amends and we start over again rather than anytime somebody confronts me i gotta dig in my heels and say i didn't do anything wrong it's your fault it, it, you're the problem no we can be the community that tells the truth and that can own when somebody tells me I've done something to harm them or hurt them, I can learn from that and we start over. That's possible when we start from a grounding of grace, that I know that if I mess up, I'm not automatically kicked out of the club, but rather there's a chance to begin again. And yeah, if I continually refuse that I don't wanna be a part of this community, if I keep acting like <clears throat> I can't be changed, I, I have no faults, to uh, correct or no ways to grow, I'm already cutting myself off from community. At some point, the rest of the community just goes, fine, have it your way, but always with the door open. Jesus has this really interesting, and we're gonna hear him say it this Sunday. He says, you know, if somebody keeps over and over and over again, refusing to listen, even when everybody else says, come on, just, just can't you see you hurt somebody? Can't, can't we start over again? If somebody continues to refuse, then he says, treat them like a tax collector. A Gentile. Well, how did Jesus treat tax collectors and Gentiles? Like they are exactly the people he's ready to welcome in again. People who maybe don't know better. People who maybe do need to hear that there's a, a, another way to live. But 
people for whom the door is still open. We're a community of people who can begin again. It's a little bit hard for me to say these words, knowing that also this is my last week with Hope and New Life as congregations. And this coming Sunday, as we explore these texts, this is going to be my last Sunday with you. And as much as that's difficult and bittersweet in some ways, the thing that gives me hope is that Jesus has always envisioned the community of his followers as one that can begin again. And anytime there's change, anytime there's a, a, something that feels like a tear or a break or a transition, there's the hope we begin again. We are grounded in grace. And that gives us the possibility of starting over new chapters, new adventures, new blossoms when we thought they were all gone and had been destroyed. So my hope for you and for me, wherever we find ourselves, whether you gather with us on Sunday and beyond as life takes us in different directions, is that the God who brings us into this community of grace continues to give us the possibility that we can begin again. Join us this Sunday for that conversation. And then as God leads us forward to begin all sorts of new adventures and to blossom where God plants us. See you Sunday.